What is up guys? Athena here. Welcome back to Code 3 Life. Um, I'm trying out a new camera today. Um, I actually borrowed it from my friend, so I'm not just using my smartphone. Uh, because for a project that I have coming up here soon, I wanted a nicer camera. Uh, so I've got two interviews coming up in the next two weeks, like one right after the other. So I was thinking like, hey, I want to do a reaction video um, just before I dive into that. Um, just because I'm not gonna be, you know, doing reaction videos for the next couple weeks. But uh, I, I was just like not feeling it today. And I have told you guys before, like I'm not gonna try and force um, not fantastic content when I don't feel like I can do it. So I'm not going to. I saw this photo going around on Facebook and the news because freaking everybody and their mom is pissed off about this photo, and I totally understand why. So this photo was taken of um, a fire truck going emergent to a call, and they're trying to get through an intersection, and according to witnesses, this lady was walking across the crosswalk, and instead of stopping and yielding the way you really should, she took her sweet fucking time and then as she walked in front of the fire truck, she flipped them off, as you can see. And, oh my god, it... I feel like it is the embodiment of so many things that are wrong with how people treat first responders today. The disconnect between first responders and the people we serve. And I wanted to talk about those issues, mostly because I'm like fucking pissed off about it. Like, oh my god, I saw that picture and I was, I was just fucking shaking with how angry I was. Um, and what better place to talk about it than on the internet? So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna make a lot of generalizations in this video. Take them with a grain of salt. I was able to kind of narrow down what I thought the the issues were that created this whole like mini cosmos of how um, the public and first responders interact. Um, first issue is entirely with first responders and that is the issue that first responders tend to be very isolationist um, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, second issue is lack of education in uh, the general public, which is both an issue with the public and an issue with first responders. Um, third issue is lack of consequences, which which is kind of both an issue with first responders and the general public. And then lack of ownership. So I'm going to talk about all of these things. <laughs> it's been kind of a weird day. So first issue first responders and their fetish for isolationism. Um, in many ways, the way that first responders, and in this, in this particular sense, I'm talking mostly EMS and not so much fire and police, the way that we kind of deal with the fact that our job is fucking hard, um, we're constantly disrespected, we are, you know, paid less, mistreated by our leaders. Like it's, it's a general shit show. One of the ways we deal with this is through martyr complexes. So like, it's okay, we can take it because, you know, we're heroes and we will fucking, you know, lay down on the barbed wire for you guys. Because to us, that makes us feel like all of the suffering we experience has a purpose and a meaning. And so we isolate ourselves from the general public and, you know, we make secret Facebook groups that, you know, no one else is allowed into and we have our inside jokes and if someone, you know, disrespects us or doesn't understand us, it's, well, because they just don't fucking get it, which is kind of true, but, like, do you kind of see what I'm saying? Like, we choose to distance ourselves from the public, um, and frankly, sometimes from each other, to keep ourselves from getting hurt. And that is a real issue because people don't want to take the time to sit with the public and teach them CPR and explain to them what our job means. And 
really take time to share that part of ourselves with people because people like first responders especially ems have been hurt so many times by patients general public leadership each other that we just don't want to open ourselves up and i think that that's a huge issue that we as first responders need to deal with go to fucking therapy and see seek the help that you need that's how you fix that first one second one is lack of education most people in the general public, their only education on what EMS does is through TV and movies. And so it's no fucking wonder that they're so fucking stupid when it comes to this sort of thing. It's no wonder that they think that CPR can bring everybody back. It's no wonder that, you know, they call us fucking ambulance drivers because that's what the news calls us. That's what media calls us. It's no wonder that they have no fucking clue what we actually do because all of the media that is produced about first responders is consumed almost entirely by first responders. This is mostly theory. I don't actually have the numbers to back this up, but I'm pretty confident. Do you know who the biggest consumers of the TV shows Cops and Live PD are? EMS and firefighters. <laughs> all we fucking do at fire stations is watch The Office and Live PD when we're not running calls. But we need to make sure that people are getting educated in what EMS does in more than just pop culture, but also we should make our pop culture more educational because unfortunately pop culture in movies and TV is like most of people's life experience. They know things to be true because they saw them on TV and in movies. And that's part of why I started my channel because I want people to understand that this isn't accurate. You can't depend on movies and TV shows to provide accurate information about what fire, police, EMS, and hospital people do. Hospital folk. And I personally think that this is like an actual serious semi-political issue because if you've got the general public who's solely being educated by fiction, because they're unable or unwilling to educate themselves elsewhere, we need to make that fiction realistic. I know that sounds stupid, but that, that, there it is. We need to have community classes on CPR. We need to have ways that the public can interact with us and learn about what we do in a way that isn't when we're showing up to their house. Because yeah, that's a really accurate representation of how EMS works, but it's not effective because people are emotional and all they remember, all they tell their friends is either they're really good or they're really bad. And that's no way to educate. Um, and people in the general public need to take it upon themselves to do this too. They should learn CPR. They should learn that CPR doesn't fucking work most of the time. It's, it's a Hail Mary. It's a fuck it, let's break some ribs, they're already fucking dead. It, it is not a catch-all. CPR does not always work. It almost never works actually, even when you're a trained professional and have other things you can use. People who have opinions on EMS should educate themselves on EMS. Because this fucking lady who's flipping off a fire truck as they're going emergent probably thinks that whatever is happening on the other end of that call is not as important as what she's going through. People have no perspective. If someone at Starbucks just messed up their order so much of the time, they think that's the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone on the planet. Because they, they, they can't think beyond their own immediate experience. And I think education and perspective helps a lot. I think it's a good thing to get involved with the sorts of people that EMS serve all the time. I can't tell you how many times I've had a conversation with family members about the type of people that I treat repeatedly. So like people who are getting drunk every other day that I'm picking up, people who are calling because they want pain meds and they will tell me to my face, I just want you to give me fentanyl or I just want you to give me Dilaudid. The type of people who are calling for lift assist every other day and get fucking sassy about it when you say that this is a waste of 911 resources. The people who call because they don't want to go to jail that night and they're getting arrested and they think that going with me 
is gonna change that somehow. I've had so many conversations with family and friends and they call me judgmental, they call me cynical, but it's, it's like a judgment on my character for, you know, expressing how EMS actually works. When they have never worked with the homeless, the constantly drunk, the drug seeking, the uh, psychologically impaired, the I just don't know how to fucking deal with my life so I'm gonna call 911 every day population. They've never worked with them a day in their lives. So if you wanna have an opinion on what EMS does, get involved with the people that EMS sees every fucking day and then you're allowed to have your opinion. Well, you're always allowed to have your opinion, but your opinion doesn't matter unless it's founded in actual experience and data. Number three is lack of consequences. I've said it before, people I know, people I'm surrounded with have said it before, people in EMS, fire, police, and healthcare get assaulted by the thousands every single year. And some of them die. And what happens to those people? Fucking nothing. Nothing. Because they are not psychologically fit to stand trial, because they were emotional, because uh, because surely the nurse or the paramedic or the doctor must have done something wrong to deserve being punched. And it's bullshit. If a patient can hold a nurse hostage for hours torturing her, if a patient can hijack an ambulance and then run over an EMT, they're psychologically fit to stand trial. If you are in a bar fight and you fucking kill someone because you get really pissed off, you're still going to jail for manslaughter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you were emotional in that moment. It doesn't matter if you were upset, unless you're killing a nurse, a paramedic, a doctor, one of those people. Fucking bullshit, man. And there aren't consequences. It honestly astounds me how many people do not understand that assaulting a first responder is a crime. Why would it not occur to them that this is a crime? I don't know, but we need to make consequences. It, it's, it's only in a couple systems, only in a couple hospitals where they, where they put up posters that say it is a crime to assault these people. Please be respectful in your words and please refrain from violence or you will be arrested and or removed from the hospital. That's not something that we're telling people. It's not something we're enforcing. In some systems and hospitals, you can lose your job for reporting being assaulted by a patient. I, why? I, I don't understand. And like preventing her walking across the fucking sidewalk and flipping off a firefighter, why is that not a crime? Why is it not a crime to prevent a first responder from responding to an emergency. People refuse to pull over for me all the fucking time. They'll slam their brakes on, they'll cut me off, they'll pull over to the left instead of the right when everybody else is pulling to the right, blocking the only two lanes of fucking traffic. Why does this not earn a ticket? Why can you not get a ticket for preventing a first responder responding to an emergency? Why is this not illegal? In some places it is, but is it enforced? Fucking no. If someone got pulled over for pulling to the left instead of the right, okay, I'm gonna... This is a very emotionally charged topic and I would really appreciate if you could be quiet. No? Cool. <sighs> anyway. Um... In a lot of places, it is illegal to misuse the 911 system, and yet, why is it not illegal for people to call for lift assist every other day when, oh, I don't know, there are caseworkers involved and, you know, fire has offered to completely pay to redo her house so that it's wheelchair safe, and we have actually bought her a, a motorized wheelchair so that she can get around without falling out of it. You know, not talking about any specific person in particular, but why is that not at least ticketable? 
Why are we not charging for that? Why, <laughs> why is it okay to misuse the 911 system? And everybody is super careful about it because they're just like, hey, if we ticket someone for misusing the 911 system and then they don't want to call later when they actually are in trouble and they die, we get sued. No, fucking no. There is a huge gap between educating someone in such a way that they know how to properly use the 911 system and like essentially being responsible for someone dying. They do not, they are not the same thing. And, and to say, hey, we can't do this because, you know, someone might die and blame us. It's a cop out. It's cheap. It's stupid. We can do more. I don't understand this recent trend of like trying to divorce people's actions from the consequences. I, I just don't understand why it has to be so goddamn black and white. Consequences do not equal necessarily punishment. They don't necessarily equal abandonment. Like, I, I'm using the word consequence in a more like philosophical sense of like not assigning a moral judgment to it, but literally like, you know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And some consequences are really shitty. Like you could be born with really unfortunate genetics and grow up to develop schizophrenia. Like some asshole could get drunk and hit your car while you're driving and kill you and everyone in your family. And that is a consequence to that person driving drunk. I'm not saying this is what you deserve or this is what should happen, but like it is the way of reality that every single action causes other things to happen. And I don't understand the fact that these days it seems that holding someone accountable for their actions is tantamount to like cruelty or it's really ridiculous. And I, I just don't get it because cause if you are a career alcoholic and your blood alcohol level is like 0.3 when you're sober and if you went below that you would have a seizure and you're drunk one night and you punch a paramedic in the face and break their jaw, there should be consequences to that. Like that is the natural way of the universe. <laughs> like, and yet it seems like holding someone accountable for their actions makes people come out of the woodwork and be like, well, it's the system that broke them and it's, you know, it's everyone else's fault that they wouldn't help them. And I don't believe that things in a person's past justify the way they hurt others. You see what I'm saying? And yet we try to divorce everything from its consequences. Like if someone hurts a first responder, it is acceptable because they're upset or because it was an intense situation. Like I, I think that that is one of the reasons why, for, why EMS is so broken. Because when bad things happen to paramedics and EMTs, there are no consequences. And there should be. This to me is not that complicated, but apparently it is to a lot of other people. The last issue is ownership. Um, very much tied into consequences, but I think it's a more like internal thing. You own your actions and you own the consequences of your actions. I'm not really sure how to phrase this, so I'll just tell you an example. Um, many times in my career I've been screamed at, I've been assaulted a few times, I've been spit on, I've been insulted, I've been threatened. More things than you would imagine happens to a first responder has happened to me and most of the other people I work with. And yet I've had people scream at me and then when I tell them to stop treating me this way, they will tell me to my face, well this is what you signed up for. How fucking insane is that? It almost feels like ownership for people's actions is like a punishment or it's just so uncomfortable that people can't take it. So they will blame everything else. They'll blame the system. They will blame uh, the person in EMS for going into this field because this is what you signed up for. I'm not really sure how to explain it past the fact that when you do shit, 
Hey, baby. That when you do shit, it affects other people, and you are somewhat responsible for that. And unfortunately, I don't really know how to fix that because there's such a culture right now of like, everything bad that happens to you is someone else's fault and everything bad that you do is a result of the system failing you. So I don't really know how to fix that. It's a culture wide issue. But even though I don't know how to fix it, I can tell you that a reason that first responders are treated the way they are is because people don't have any fucking ownership at all. But you gotta do it. Like seriously, if you're not responsible for any of your actions, why are you on this earth? If, if you are helpless, swept along the path of the universe with absolutely no power over what you do, why do you exist? That doesn't make any sense. I honestly have no idea how this video is going to turn out. Turn out, I've rambled for like about an hour and a half. I'm going to really try to cut that down. <laughs> but I think part of the reason why I don't feel like I can make a reaction video today is because I'm so worked up about these issues. Because these are issues that I've been dealing with since I entered EMS. But recently it's just been it's been something that's been incredibly relevant to my life, both personally and professionally, is people res just absolutely refusing to take some goddamn responsibility and ownership for their actions. First responders suffer the consequences of the general public's ignorance and malice. And yeah, we do have some responsibility there. We have responsibility to educate the public. We have responsibility to open ourselves up, open up our world so that other people can see it and not keep it to ourselves because we're afraid of being hurt. But honestly, I think if the public understood what first responders go through every day, I don't know how they would react because they already throw shit out like, oh, I couldn't do what you do. Really? You have no fucking clue what I do. All you do is watch TV and movies that are just so fucking off the chain insane. And that's how the public gets educated. I hope this was at least somewhat coherent because I've got so many thoughts on this, but I don't really know how to put them together in a way that makes sense and is like mostly unoffensive because like I said, apparently holding people responsible for their actions even when they've had a tough life is like the worst fucking thing that someone can say. Anyway. Well, Gus made an appearance in this video often, so here's the kitty. <laughs> you having a good time? You're pairing up a storm, so I have to assume so. I hope that you guys got something out of this. I hope that, you know, my unending rage is <laughs> at least somewhat helpful in some aspect of my life. I guess I'm just really tired of people who have the privilege of not being treated the way first responders do try to give me advice and and judgment in how I feel about being a first responder. It just feels like people are using my career and my experiences for entertainment without actually listening to my experiences and the experiences of other people in my career field. Get CPR certified, learn about how ineffective CPR is in most cases, um, be kind to each other. I, I think that, you know, a lot of the shit going on in the world would not be going on if people were understanding and kind to each other if people actually took the time to try and understand other people's worldviews and experiences. Ugh, God. I think I'm about done rambling. Um, I hope that you have gained at least a little bit of insight from what I've said. I hope that I've been able to express myself in a way that makes sense. This is, to me, this is just such a huge topic. I have a really hard time nailing down individual points in a way that like makes sense and doesn't connect to a million other points in a million different ways. So um, 
stay tuned for those interviews and stay tuned for some of my bigger projects down the line. I hope things are going well for you guys and I'm gonna sign on out.